Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. Um, so we've always tried pretty hard to build applications that are resilient to failures. Here's a simple application. Um, so we're gonna, gonna, gonna look at some diagrams here. So we've got an app server and a database server, and the moment we look at this, we say there's some opportunities to do a little bit better, like what if our database server fails? So maybe we introduce a, a standby server and we can fail over to it in that sort of scenario. And it's not too hard to take this idea and extend it out and build a pretty canonical data center architecture where we've got you know, a bunch of different app servers uh, with traffic to them managed by a layer of load balancers that are redundant and you know, multiple routers and upstream network providers and so on. And we're pretty confident when we look at this that any one thing here can fail and we're not gonna have too bad of a day and then we realize the power might go out. So um, now we need two of these and we're sort of back to square one balancing traffic across data centers. And this is all remedial stuff. We've all been doing this for a really long time. But something sort of new has crept in over the last decade or so, and that's that we're introducing new kinds of dependencies into our application uh, architectures through uh, the use of cloud service providers. So here's a maybe a little bit more modern of an application delivery architecture. We might have a managed DNS network um, directing traffic for our domain um, to some content delivery network, and some of that traffic is coming back to origins across a bunch of different data centers. And even down in the application itself, we're relying on services for kind of core functions, storage, message queuing, even AI, machine learning, a million other things. And we love these services. They're great. They let us focus on the things that we're best at. So we don't want to do without them, but there's a problem, which is that they fail sometimes. Um, for all kinds of reasons, right? Like weird bugs creep in and manifest at ac absolutely the wrong time, or you know, some kid on the internet has access to a botnet and beats the crap out of your service provider. Some guy wakes up in the morning uh, before he's had his first cup of coffee, makes a typo, and these are all um, issues that have harmed major cloud service providers uh, in the application delivery ecosystem in the last few months. So these are real things that happen. So a pretty natural thing for us to do is say, hey, we should introduce some redundancy um, at the cloud service provider layers in our application architectures, maybe multiple DNS networks managing our domains and directing traffic across a bunch of different CDNs and, and on and on. And that's easy to say. Um, how do you actually do it? And let's just take a quick deep dive into how we might do this today in the context of managed DNS networks, because that's an area I have a little bit of background in. So. Um, if you did a dig today on LinkedIn.com for the NS record, you'd see this or something like it, right? A um, couple different DNS networks in play, NS1 and Dyn. Um, and by the way, um, Samir from LinkedIn is going to be talking about this setup later today. So if you aren't already planning to go see that talk, please go do. Um, but how do we actually do this behind the scenes? There's a few things we see our customers doing uh, with respect to introducing redundancy at the, the DNS layer. Um, the first thing is something I call active standby setup. So the idea here is you might have a managed DNS provider that's primary for your domain, you manage your configuration there, and then maybe you have a standby provider, you find some way to synchronize your zones and your, your DNS records over there. If your primary provider's having a bad day, like some attack or something like that, you go to your registrar, you update the name servers, you flip the big switch, and this is a really bad idea, you should never do this. Um, but it's the first thing that comes to mind for a lot of people. And the reason you should never do this is you have no control over the propagation of um, uh, that name server change through the TLDs and through all the caches on the internet and so on. And in fact, in real scenarios, we've seen this kind of setup exacerbate outages, not mitigate them. Another mechanism um, for introducing redundancy at the DNS layer is zone transfer. So zone transfer is a uh, kind of a protocol alongside DNS that's existed for a really long time for transferring um, domain and record information between DNS systems. Some cloud providers support it, some don't. If yours doesn't, you should really kick and scream about that. It's very important um, for every cloud provider doing DNS to support zone transfer today. Another setup that we're seeing emerge um, and become very prevalent is you know, the idea of a normalized central configuration for your DNS setup. Um, this is often pretty important and, and the mechanism we see used when our customers are using more advanced features of modern DNS platforms like traffic management stuff or multi-CDN setups. 
And the reason is those features don't necessarily translate directly across some mechanism like zone transfer. So um, commonly our customers will either build tools of their own to synchronize configs across the APIs of their providers, or there's some nice tools out there like OctoDNS from GitHub or Terraform from HashiCorp that have emerged recently that you should go check out. And a last approach that we see uh, on occasion is some DNS providers are capable of deploying their technology in uh, redundant networks, um, sometimes dedicated to your use case. That gets rid of some of the feature parity and synchronization challenges. So there's a bunch of setups out there for doing redundant DNS, and, and the bottom line is, um, especially after the attack environment that we saw, or the DDoS threat that we saw last year, it's very quickly become best practice to deploy redundant DNS setups. I strongly encourage you to look into doing this. There's a lot of options, as you see, it's not that hard. And sort of a corollary to that is elsewhere in your stack, as you're introducing cloud services, um, there's a lot of new tools emerging, new best practices, so you really should be seeking to um, deploy redundancy at these layers of, of your application delivery infrastructure as well. Thank you very much.